Church plants often start small. We did. Just a handful of people with a dream and a desire to follow God. And as that group reaches out to others and the Holy Spirit blesses the work, the size of the group grows. At first, most people know each other very well. And everyone in the group knows the pastor very well. There's naturally a strong sense of connection. Everyone is in the same relationship bubble. Everyone has some idea of what's going on in each other's lives, most decisions are made together, and the pastor is involved in some way or another in most of the things that are going on. And out of the health of that group, there's further growth, and further growth, and further growth. And eventually, the relationship bubble finds itself being stretched to the point that it no longer feels healthy. As the church grows, it becomes harder and harder for people to know each other. After there's more than about 150 people, most people in the congregation start to feel like there's a sizable portion of the church that they hardly know at all. The pastor finds it harder and harder to maintain relationships with everyone and is starting to feel like he's being stretched very thin. At this point, one of two things happen. Either the church finds itself unwilling to change its structure and it settles in somewhere near that maximum comfortable size of a one-bubble church. It finds it harder to reach people because newcomers find it difficult to get into the bubble. There's not much room left unless someone else leaves. Or the church decides to change and add more bubbles. When this happens, the church becomes more like a bubble bath, a community of interconnected relationship bubbles working together. Usually that means the formation of more and greater emphasized connection groups. It can also happen with things like additional worship services and the formation of additional and more independent service teams. But all of these options together create smaller, easier to join relationship bubbles where people can be better connected and can be better cared for. The advantage now is now there's much more room for people to join. The challenge is now there's also more structure. There's need for some policies and procedures that help all the groups to work together without hurting one another. There's need for greater vision and a greater sense of shared mission even in the midst of diversity. There's a greater need to be deliberate about helping people connect because their first exposure to the church, usually the large Sunday worship service, can actually be a much harder place to really get to know someone than it used to be. For most people, until they find their way into a smaller bubble, they really won't feel that connected. The second challenge is that there is less sense of connection to the pastor than there used to be. The pastor's role shifts from putting the majority of time and effort into individual relationships to putting the majority of time and effort into the leaders of the various bubbles where the relationships are being built. They're still available for crisis care and other special needs as things come up, but they're less present to each individual. The pastor is less involved with the daily details of the church because more and more of the decisions are being made in the various bubbles. For both the pastor and the congregation, this shift can be difficult, but it's necessary if the church is going to stay healthy. The change can be hard, but it's worth it for the sake of long-term health and mission. As the church finds itself a healthy, mid-sized church with a collection of bubbles of relationship care and a greater number of empowered leaders, even more people can be reached because the church is able to reach out in a greater variety of ways and there's room for people to join. And with the pooled resources of this collection of bubbles, it's possible to launch new ministries and even plant new churches more than ever before. As Columbia Grove gets closer and closer to being a church of more than 300 people on a regular week, I think you'll notice the effect of these changes. We have more structure than we did back when we were a small church. We also have much more variety and diversity. We have more leaders. And the lead pastor now is rarely the best first person to go to when there's ministry details to be discussed. More often, it's a ministry team leader or a dedicated staff person that's making the decision about the details. And who knows what's going on in that area better than the lead pastor does. 
These are changes. Some are hard, but they are good. And they can be good for you as you find your own place of connection and service. If you haven't done so already, please carefully consider what connection group you might want to be a part of, or perhaps start. There's such a variety, but it's important that you and everyone find one. It's the best place for you to grow and to find real support. And if this church is your home, and you're already feeling pretty connected, and you want to help us to continue to grow and to continue to reach people for Christ, the number one best thing you can do is to be someone who helps others find a place to connect. Pick five people in the congregation and pray for them. Be a part of our care team. And be friendly with people that you don't yet know very well on Sunday and help people to make friends and eventually find a connection group and a service team that they can call their own. We used to be like a bubble. Now we're more like a bubble bath. But I sure am glad that we're on the mission of God and working to build His kingdom together.